All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Angela Robbins, and I'm an associate professor of history at Meredith College. We're really excited about tonight's program, and thank you for joining us in this mostly virtual and limited on-site environment. We have a lot of people on site tonight. That's really exciting as well. This is the second season of scholarships inspired originally by a Meredith College community and corporate outreach initiative. Scholarships was born out of conversations between my colleague in the history department, Dan Fountain and me, because we were especially interested in teaming up with Raleigh Brewing Company. Not only because it's directly across the street, as many of you know, <laughs> but also because Raleigh Brewing has the distinction of being the first woman owned brewery in North Carolina. As a women's college, we recognize lots of potential in joining forces and Christy Nystead, said owner of Raleigh Brewing, has been a great partner helping us pull together these events. We'd also like to especially acknowledge the staff of Raleigh Brewing. Some of them are gonna be really central to this program tonight. And our colleagues at Meredith College who have been so helpful in promoting and supporting the scholarship series because it is thanks to their talents that we have been able to bring our audiences quality programming focused on history, culture, science, and craft beer over this past year. Today, we welcome several women who work in the craft beer industry, including a couple of Meredith alumni, to talk about their experiences and their products. Historically, women were the primary brewers, producing small batches of beer at home, operating local taverns, and passing knowledge and skills to the next generation. During the Industrial Revolution, with a shift to large scale production, men began to dominate brewing and, of course, reap those greater profits as well. The craft beer industry has been growing by leaps and bounds in recent years. North Carolina alone has over 350 breweries and brew pubs. And yet, according to a 2018 survey by the Brewers Association, only 22% of breweries are owned by women and only 7.5% of brewers are women. Our guests tonight are among that small portion of women owners, managers, and brewers in the industry today who are on a mission to brew quality beer and support other women in the industry. Our Office of Alumni Relations is helping plan and market these events. It's great to see so many alums with us tonight. And on that note, I would like to turn things over to Taylor Twine with Alumni Relations, who is on site with my colleague, Dan Fountain. Take it away, Taylor. Thank you, Angela. Um, and thank you to all of the alumni and friends that are joining us online and here in the room. Um, we're so happy to have all of you here. Uh, before we start, I want to quickly remind you of our last few remaining event, alumni events taking place this year. On December 7th, we have our virtual alumni book club. December 8th, we have Ain't Too Proud to Beg at the DPAC. December 9th, we have the Young Alumni Board's Ornament Paint and Sip. On December 12th, we have a wreath design class with the Painted Pearl. And on December 29th, our Black Alumni Collective will have a vision board meeting to plan for the next year. Um, this Sunday, we will also have a drive-through afternoon with Santa. Um, that is a registration event. So if you're interested, please email me or check your email for the registration links. Um, we hope you'll plan to make, we hope that you will make plans to join us at one of these upcoming events. And we're also looking forward to getting back to more in-person programming in the new year. I'm now pleased to turn over the program to Laura Aisha in class of 2002. Thank you everybody so much for coming. It is so, it is so great to see all of you here and everybody who joined us um, through Zoom. Um, I'm very excited to host um, this event tonight uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, I'm gonna kick off the introductions um, right away. I'm gonna let everybody kind of introduce themselves. We do have, um, including myself, we have six people on the panel. Um, <clears throat> we have some great questions we wanna get through. So we're gonna, we're gonna dive right in. Um, I'm gonna ask everybody to introduce themselves with their name and uh, what brewery they work for and their role, a little bit about what they do. Um, and I'll start out again. My name is Laura Aishin. Uh, I did graduate from Meredith in class of 2002. Um, I'm currently the tapper manager for Raleigh Brewing at the Raleigh and the Cary location. We have two locations. 
Um, and um, I do a lot of the on-site events here as well. Um, and that's my current role. So, Hi, I'm London Tessner. Um, I don't work for Murray. I'm a lawyer with the Beer Law Center. Um, I graduated from Meredith in 2017. Um, my job consists of uh, helping breweries with a lot of business issues. We do ABC and TTB compliance. Um, I don't really handle a lot of that, but most of my job helps brewers with um, trademark, employee relations, um, and other like business issues, contracts, things like that. Hi, my name is Jamie Burr. I work for Ask Found Brewing Company. My brewery is in the Charlotte area, and I'm the Raleigh sales rep. Hi, my name is Amanda Burns. I work for White Street Brewing Company based in Lake Forest. Uh, I am the sales manager for the company. I manage our sales team and all of our wholesaler relationships across the state of North Carolina. Hi, I'm Hannah Paris. I work for Mason Jar Lager Company. I'm the lead brewer. Uh, basically what I do is I am the coach to the other brewers and seller people at our primary location and the new location as well that's coming to Apex Tap Station. My name is Anita Riley. I'm with Raleigh Brewing. Uh, also lead brewer, similar job duties, um, and I also do the majority of the work creation, which is the implemented beer. Right, very excited. We also have um, a lot of um, women um, in the audience today that work at various breweries around the Triangle, and hopefully once we get through some questions, we'll be able to introduce them and um, recognize them as well for what they're doing in the craft beer industry. Um, so I kind of have broken up the questions um, for like a silly little nugget of information followed by um, a question that all the, the panels need to answer. Um, so the first is, um, tell us your favorite beer which is a fun question, but it's also like picking your favorite child. It's scary. <laughs> um, after a lot of thought, um, my favorite beer is um, actually, it's called Izzy. <coughs> Excuse me, Izzy. Um, it's a strawberry sorcery made by Bob Brothers and Carrie. Um, and the real question is, um, share what brought you to the industry and how long you've been working at craft beer, um, how you got started and maybe how your current job is different than where you started. Um, so, um, I actually started working um, at Cocoa Booth Amphitheater with the Food and Beverage Program. Um, got very involved with bringing local craft beer into the venue. Um, so, it required me to do a lot of research and um, <laughs> visit a lot of breweries and drink a lot of beer um, to bring the good product into our venue. Um, and fell in love with the, the brewing industry. Um, and at that time, um, was heavy on the event side um, and then kind of found this job with, which married the events and the beer together um, at Bond Brothers um, and was there as the event coordinator and tapper manager for four years. Um, and I've actually just moved to Raleigh Brewing uh, Company uh, about three months ago and enjoyed the transition of a very different company and atmosphere um, and sharing the experience that I've had. Um, so that's kind of what I've done. Um, so, uh, my favorite beer is Bell's Too Hearted, which I'm not supposed to say yes. that now. I love Bell's Too Hearted, uh, but, you know, knowing that I'm not supposed to say that, I'll say Trophy Wife. <laughs> um, so, I started working in the beer industry, well, at Beer Law Center in 2019, when they put out a job uh, application for a beer turn. And I was like, what is that? That sounds cool. So I applied for a beer term position. I think it was for summer and it was for spring. So I started working immediately. <laughs> um, glad that they hired me. Thank you. My bosses are here. <laughs> so I stayed with them after I graduated from law school and passed the bar. And so now I'm an attorney. Um, and my job has changed in that, you know, going from an intern, not really um, having a lot of interaction with clients. And now I'm doing a lot more hands-on work and getting a lot of interaction with clients, which I really like. <laughs> my favorite beer is from foothills and it's sexual chocolate i uh i camped out and i've waited in line at like four in the morning for that beer and i have an, an impressive vertical back at home i have almost almost 10 years of bottles um that i've saved up for yeah, it's my favorite beer. <laughs> I started with All About Beer magazine. I used to go out, I was a brand ambassador, so I would take a little 
tasting set to Lowe's Foods and I would just hand out samples at the grocery store. And, you know, we would have different local breweries like Mystery Brewing or Ro Rail House. And uh, you'd pass out the samples and your goal was to sell the beer. And, you know, I always made that happen. And just <laughs> fell in love with beer and sales. And, uh, and now I do, now I still pass out samples, but it's to beer buyers and other places. So, yeah. All right, so my favorite beer, I had to think hard on this one as well, because there's a lot. Um, but this one's a little more sentimental for me, so it's Four Mall, which is a Belgian Trappist pale ale. Um, I've actually been to the monastery in Belgium, so it's very near and dear to my heart, and I also love beer, so that's, that's my favorite. Um, so my, my story of getting into craft is a little long, but I know I've got a time limit, so I'll make it short and speedy. Um, but I actually have a background in education, so I have a secondary, uh, secondary education and a degree in English um, from Mansfield University in Pennsylvania. And after graduating, I actually ended up teaching abroad in France for a while, so I spent five years in France. So while there, I fell in love with wine, but also the amazing beer from our neighboring countries in Belgium. Um, so when I came back to the U.S. in 2009, my eyes were open to the craft beer revolution, and it was pretty exciting to see what was happening. But at that time, as you all remember, it was not a very easy time to get a job anywhere, let alone a beer industry. Um, so I moved to Raleigh and started working at the Busy Bee Cafe. Um, so when I thought the little girl from Pennsylvania knew something about beer, boy, did I learn something when I moved to Raleigh. <laughs> uh, so I had a really great experience working there with that team. And one night I attended a terrapin beer dinner and I went by myself. And who you sit with, the beer reps that you've recognized from being in and out of the, uh, the establishment. And I was sitting next to the director of craft beer at the time for Ari Jeffrey, which was a distributing company. And uh, she said they were hiring. And so I sent my resume in the next morning and started out as an on premise sales rep with Ari Jeffries, uh, moved on to their craft team, moved into the role of a craft brand manager, and eventually took over as the director of craft brands um, before the company was sold. Um, and then during the transition, I had a little bit of a break and then jumped on board with White Street. So now I'm on the supplier side and I get to see the business from a different angle. And how long have you been with White Street, Amanda? It's been about two years now. So I've got about 10 years in the industry total. So I was with Ari Jeffries for eight, did a few little jobs in between, and I've been with uh, White Street for two years. My favorite beer is probably Pilsner Arkell. Um, a huge fan of clear beer, and that's a classic. Um, I got into the industry, I guess sort of similar. Um, I just loved craft beer. I was working at a gastro pub uh, and I started homebrewing. And I graduated college. I went into the corporate world and uh, I kind of hated it. <laughs> and I sat in a cubicle for, you know, eight, 10 hours a day and I was miserable. So I decided to pursue my hobby as a career. It was kind of difficult. So I got a part time position at a distillery in a neighborhood. Oh, I got a part-time position. I just stop. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, so I started working at a distillery and a nano brewery because those were the two only industry jobs that I could find. I was working in both part-time. And I was working front of house for the distillery and really for the nano brewery as well, but I just kind of kept pushing them to teach me more and more production until I finally got a role in a bigger brewery working production, but I was a production assistant and a sales associate because that was the only way I could get a production role is if I agreed to do sales as well. So I stuck it out there. I was there for almost three years. And in that time, I actually worked my way up to being their head brewer. And then I felt like I had kind of learned what I could there. It was a pretty small uh, production space. And I started looking what else was out there, what was kind of close, but not too far away. And I ended up moving four hours north and ended up at Full Steam. I was at Full Steam for several years before just recently starting at Mason Yard. Um, so I've been in the industry for about eight years, a little bit more. Um, my current role is very, very different than what I did when I started. I am not front in front of house at all. I still like interacting with customers because I think they're awesome, but I don't actually get paid to do that part. <laughs> um, I, 
I didn't know that I had a favorite beer until this question came up. Um, <laughs> and I have to go to the only beer that's ever made me feel special, which is a slow pour pills from Beer Step Waterhouse. When you have that glass in front of you and there's this meringue on top and it's just so like, there's a texture, like a mouthfeel to it that's just so silky smooth. And I, it just makes you feel like somebody took a lot of time to make that beer well and to pour it well. And yeah, I'll, I'll tip big for that and I won't go to Denver without having one, so. Um, I came to the beer industry uh, because I was a photographer for 16 years and the recession happened and I did a lot of things to try to like grasp on to threads <laughs> to save that career. Um, and then like the third place in a row that I was working uh, shut down the same week that they imploded the Eastman Kodak building. And I was like, okay, got to learn something new. What do we got? <laughs> so um, I was in Asheville at the time um, and uh, was looking just through AB Tax, um, like course offerings, you know, what can I do? You know, what is even going to interest me at this point? I decided when I was eight that I wanted to be a photographer. I haven't thought about this question in a long time. Um, and that was the same time that they announced their brewing program. And I knew that Sierra Nevada was coming. I knew that New Belgium was coming. And I was like, that ticks a lot of boxes. It's, it's technical. It's creative. There's a lot of cool people that work there. So I know like that makes an impact in your day of like liking the people that you work with. Um, and so it just seemed like a really natural fit. I'm not a beer drinker. I do drink beer, but that's not like my favorite thing to drink. Um, which is good because then I know that I'm not going to have a problem. <laughs> I don't have to change careers again. Um, <laughs> um, but it's fascinating to me. And uh, much like photography, I thought that I liked being behind the camera and that that was the creative process. But what I really fell in love with was the dark room, which is super antiquated because um, they had those when I was going to photography school. Um, but I really found a similar thing with beer where I thought that I would enjoy just the pace of you know, being on the production floor, um, being in that environment is very natural to me. I grew up in an auto body shop, like industrial environments, very familiar. Um, and just not being behind a desk all day. I feel like I'm in timeout. So um, all of those things were true, but I also am super fascinated by yeast. Um, this little invisible thing that can do a million different things and, and wear a million different faces and can keep you guessing even after all these years and like hundreds of years of research and we still don't know everything that there is to know um so super fascinated by that um sorry i'm getting long-winded I started uh, through school in 2014, uh, started working professionally in 2016 at a seven barrel brew house, um, flame tanks, brewing, packaging, a little bit of everything similar uh, where I felt like there was nothing left for me to learn that I could learn there. Um, so I ended up um, going to Lone Rider, which was a um, larger scale, much larger production. Um, annually, I got the opportunity to work with the Centrifuge, um, learn some new skills, um, get better at the skills that I already had. And then from there, I was at Terrapin for the last two years, um, brewing there um, and doing filtration and, and clarification. And then just recently started here at Raleigh. So um, I just kind of wanted to share what I uh, heard from everybody else is that when <clears throat> you commented on what your favorite beer was, how many of us had a personal story and attachment to that beer? And it wasn't necessarily about the beer and we all the good beers, but, <laughs> um, but just how, how meaningful that is. And to me, part of craft beer is 
um, you know, a story or a relationship or a connection that we make with, with the beer. Um, and I thought that was really awesome. Um, that wasn't planned. I really like that. <laughs> and the other thing that I thought was interesting is everybody's journey about how you all started at one point and kind of went somewhere else and um, have kind of, you know, moved through this journey of the craft beer world. And I feel, feel like the craft beer industry has changed and evolved a lot too, as well as our journeys and our careers. Um, and just to touch on that, um, also, I mean, I, I love the fact that London is here because she doesn't work for Murray. She is a lawyer, and but she has so much to contribute to the industry um, as as a professional, as as a woman. Um, and I think I love the fact that we've got a brewer, we've got salespeople, we've got managers. Um, and I appreciate again all the women that are here. Um, we have Kat from um, from Bombshell and High Springs. Um, Amber is also a brewer. Um, Lindsay is here. She's a brewer from Bond Brothers. Um, we have a marketing, um, a female marketing um, uh, person here full time from uh, Raleigh Brewing. Hallie's here. Um, and Kelly is also our sales team. She's from Raleigh Brewing. Um, and then Carly, who is an owner of Fun Guys Brewery in Raleigh. So a lot of women here in the industry and um, even more, I'm sure, who are online. So I just want to give you guys a hand for coming tonight to support us. So I've named a lot of breweries. Um, hopefully you guys have been to many of them. Um, other than your own brewery, what local brewery or bottle shop do you enjoy going to? Um, and then the serious question is, how do you see women's role in craft beer industry growing and changing? And what are you doing to influence women that to enter and, and uh, grow in the field? Um, so my quick response to the question is, I enjoy Trophy and Linwood. Um, locally, uh, my other favorites are Wooden Robot and out of Nashville, Tennessee, Southern Grist. Um, I really enjoy um, supporting um, uh, women coming up in the industry. Um, my uh, assistant at my former brewery is here, and I'd love to see her um, grow and develop to the amazing person and position she has today. Um, and also, I appreciate and respect the trailblazers who came before us. And I think we'd all mentioned about how when we entered the industry, it was really hard. Um, but I think it's easier now um, because of all of us here in this room um, and that there's so many different diverse roles and positions you can take in the industry. Um, I know we've all, and I'll touch on this later, we've all gotten the assumption of like, oh, you work for a brewery, you must brew beer. Um, these, these stereotypes that people have, but there's, there's so many things that you can do um, that I really, really love that about the beer industry. Um, so we'll start down with the this way. <laughs> Pressure. Um, so Raleigh's full of ton of great beer. So this one was really hard for me to choose any one thing. Um, so I have to go a little broad. I think it's on style. So I'm looking for those big over the top IPAs, burials, a good spot. I'm a huge fan of Bond Brothers Trophy. Um, model shop wise, again, there's a ton of choices. I think we're wrong with any of the. Um, Puff and Pops, uh, Pop Yandy, State of Beer. There's great beer everywhere. So, <laughs> so you, you can't pick just one. Um, so I, for me, this is an interesting question. You know, when I first joined the industry 10 years ago, it looked so different than it did today. I remember the fact that the woman who eventually became my boss and got me the job at R.A. Jeffrey, the fact that she was a female and she was running the craft team by herself, I thought was amazing. Um, and I'll never forget, it wasn't long after I moved into the role of craft team. At that time, they would do wholesaler network meetings. So the craft team for all of the anti Bush networks would meet every quarter, all get together, collaborate, talk about what's working, not working. And I walked into that room and there was a third one. And I was so excited. <laughs> there were three of us. Um, and then I had the pleasure of the following year to attend my first CBC, the Craft Leaders Conference in Denver, and go to a Pink Foods meeting. And I remember walking in and getting teary eyed because I was like, here we are. These are my people. <laughs> uh, so it was a really exciting experience. And so now just to be sitting on a panel with six other women and having another six plus women in the room who are in the industry just speaks volumes about how far we've come and how far, how much the industry has changed. Um, I think the big part for me too, similar to what Laura is saying, is just making these connections, networking with other women, supporting them into the industry, whatever role they're in whatever move they're trying to make, how can we better one another, how can we educate one another, how can we just partner to keep, you know, women in the industry and keep women coming into the industry. So, 
there's a lot of great deer in this area. Um, so I live in Fuquay and I really enjoy uh, Vicious Dishes. They have amazing food and great beer. It's a great spot. Great bartenders. I love sitting at the bar and talking to them. They're a lot of fun. Um, bottle shops. Uh, I really like uh, Fear the Lady. It's female owned and it's a really cool spot. Uh, but really, I go to as many breweries as I can, as often as I can. I want to keep supporting, especially right after COVID. A lot of us are struggling still, and I want to make sure that my favorite brewery doesn't close. So I go as much as I can when I'm traveling. I try to go to different breweries, different bottle shops, and just support as much as I can. Um, like you're just touching on the same thing, like you're saying, the roles women have in breweries has changed so much since I started. When I first started, there were hardly any women. I was the I was one of the first female head brewers in the state of South Carolina in 2017. Like, that's just crazy. Like 2017, are you serious? That wasn't that long ago. And in the upstate of South Carolina where I was working, I knew of only other one other woman working in production. So it was kind of bizarre. And then I moved up here and it's changed down there too. There's a lot of them, but I moved up here and I finally was working with other women. It was such a cool experience to be like working directly with other women on my team. And I've been incredibly blessed with that to be able to influence other women to grow. Um, I've had women reach out to me on my social media because they see me and they see that I've been in this for a while and they reach out and they ask me questions. They get to sit down and have beer with them and talk with them about how I did it and how it's easier for them and how they shouldn't be scared of it. And I'm blessed too because I get to continue training Amber from where you left off. And it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Um, I'm glad that it wasn't as hard for her to get in the industry as it was for us. Um, but it's such like an honor to be able to continue training her. This is a hard <laughs> question for me. Um, uh, local bottle shops, I usually uh, will frequent, like, I didn't, I'm from Durham, so uh, Glass Jug, same bottle shop for other girls, it's kind of my hood. Um, I haven't been to a lot of local breweries, I just relocated and got back, <laughs> um, but I do try to support them from those avenues. Um, and, uh, and, and just try to, you know, like try as many things as I can, you know, from that variety perspective. Um, yeah, it's changed a lot as far as like women in this industry. I remember going to my first North Carolina Craft Brewers Guild meeting and there were a handful of other women in the room, but if I needed to go to the restroom, I had that room to myself, you know? Um, that was my restroom. <laughs> um, and then within a couple or three years that had changed quite a lot. And it was it was refreshing, but still I kind of liked that in the <laughs> Um, but yeah, there, um, so the, the, the question, the part of this question about what are you doing to influence women to enter a growth in the field? This is the hardest part of this question for me because I did a lot for six years and I'm finally in this position where I need to focus on me for a change. <laughs> and I think as a woman, that's really, really hard to stand up and say, I'm gonna focus on me. And I did it once when I decided to go back to school as a single mom. And I think that that cycle is coming around again. Um, but with Pink Boot Society, it was six years of all the time. You know, I was a single mom going back to school. Then I was a single mom uh working full time and you know like finishing the kid you know like he was almost done with high school but not quite um and so <laughs> um and then you know pink boots was my life outside of those things um for six years so working full time pink boots almost full time and i'm tired y'all <laughs> um, but i am really 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 excited to be able to sit back and watch other women in this industry grow and succeed and pave the way and bring others forward with them and it's a really cool page 
So let me just say two things really quickly. Um, first of all, Anita, um, good, good for you for putting yourself first. I just want to say that. <laughs> Second of all, I, I forgot to mention two things. So first of all, I know we've said Pink Boots. Pink Boots is an um, international organization for women in the brewing and fermentation beverage industry. Um, there's um, international, state, and local chapters, um, and it's a great uh, support, education, network um, tool. Um, so when I first started in the beer industry, Anita was actually the biggest coach and supporter and cheerleader, um, and it's the reason, and I think a lot of people are here today in this room because of Anita. So um, we are very grateful for her to be one of the trailblazers um, in the Pink Boots and the um, So that was kind of our Pink Boots reference, and thank you to Anita. So, um. Sure. Um, so for local breweries, I love Bob Brothers and Trophy, um, Bottle Shops. I love Drink Drink Drunk. Drink Drink Drunk is not there anymore. Um, so I, I would go with Green Monkey, probably. <laughs> love Green Monkey. Um, and for how I see women's role in the craft beer industry, I mean, this year at CBC, I saw a lot more women than I ever seen yes. before. I was blown away. I was like, this is, there was a line at the bathroom. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the bathroom was not just ours. It was, you know, there was a lot of women there. And that was fantastic. It was really refreshing to see a lot more participation of women at CBC this year. Cause you know, that means they're out there in the state. Um, working in these breweries and representing women all over the state. And I love that. Um, so that's fantastic to see how much uh, women are getting involved in breweries. But I will say from my vantage point, because I'm not working at a brewery, I help, I try to do what I can to help brewers. Um, that's really what I love. And I think that to have more women get involved in the legal side or the accounting side, um, the more business focused side. And I think I do see that as well. Um, which is really great. Um, I'm just excited. I keep seeing like more women getting involved every year because the last CBC we went to was two years ago, and it was it was not a ton of women. I joined Pink Boots two years ago, and I loved that. It was very fun, and I really enjoyed being part of Pink Boots past years. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing you know that participation grow and more women getting involved in the industry in the next few years. So my favorite local spot to go to is a place down the road called Fun Guys Brewing. They're small, local, woman-owned, and the, the woman behind the scenes is phenomenal at what she does, and I really love to go and support them as often as I can. Um, being in this industry, you know, back in 2018, I think at that time, the triangle itself had 56 breweries, and I could count on one hand how many women work on the production floor. Think about that, 56 breweries and less than five in the back of the house. So I'm very, very impressed with the women that are on the production floor and killing it, and it, it's, it's not easy work. Moving kegs, moving grains, it's it's physical manual labor. So I really respect my hats off to women out there that are doing that. And then bottle shops, I try not to be with in sales, you don't want to have favorites, but I do love the, the glass jug. They've been around for a really long time. They have a wonderful selection, also woman-owned. So when I go out shopping, I I I'm very conscious about my dollars and where I spend my money, and I, I try to get back to local women owned as often as I possibly can. Um, how I see things changing, it's been it's been a blow up, and it's been a wonderful blow up. It's we we needed this, but women are more tap room managers, sales managers, production managers, uh, yeast managers, and to have other women as that influence. It really inspires you to do your best job. And then, you know, you can help someone behind you like, hey, this is the, the path you want to take. And that's it's not that difficult. And, you know, you, there's a space for you. And yeah. Um, so um, the next question is, uh, it starts off with what is one of your favorite food and beer pairings? <laughs> and um, 
the serious part is share a story or experience um, or battles or struggles you may have had as a woman in the industry or examples with gender stereotyping and how you handled it. Um, Jamie loves food and beer period, so I'm probably going to start off with this. Okay, so I, I'm a huge stout person. I love big, thick stouts, and that's not stereotypical of women, you know, a, a bourbon barrel stout that's 10, 12%. Most of them are like, oh, are you sure you don't want like a fruity sour or a light, like, you know, heavy wise, and I'm like, no, I, I really enjoy stouts. So I also love to cook with stouts. I'm Irish, so anytime I make a shepherd's pie, there's a Guinness going in this. I'll cook bangers and mash, and I'll make a, a Guinness gravy. Um, if I have braised short ribs, I'm putting a Guinness in braised short ribs. Uh, Fall, summertime, I love beer brats. I love a Marzen. I'll do like a 20 minute bath and just a couple of cans of Marzen. So I can, I can cook with beer all day long. We're going to Jamie's house after yeah. yeah. <laughs> Beer cheese dip. I, I mean, I really cook a lot with, with beer and food and pairings, you know, some nice raspberry sours with desserts and yeah, it's a lot of fun. And you can cook with food. It's, it's, you should try it if you haven't. Mine is a little less sophisticated. <laughs> I'm just say pizza and beer. <laughs> yes. But yeah, I think we should definitely go to her house. Um, try some of that. Um, I do love pizza and beer. And then the stories of my battle and struggles. Um, I do a lot of work with the alcohol industry. And then I also do a lot of work with just general business folks. Um, the on the beer side the alcohol side the issue has been brewers can do things on their own that they want to um so it's been trying to convince them that you know we can help you our job is in compliance our job is drafting employee uh contracts and doing llc formation sure you might be able to file your articles for organization you might be able to do that but i can do it quicker and i can do get your EIN really quickly and i can draft your operating agreement very fast um, so I can make your life a lot easier, but brewers can do it on their own and they want to. So the, trying to convince them of our value is going to struggle. And then when you add in the fact that I'm a woman um, is an extra leap. So um, that's been a struggle, but I think that it's a struggle that we've overcome pretty well. Um, I don't have too many issues in the alcohol side with um, feeling like I'm being discriminated against a lot, which is very nice. Um, in the just general business side, I'll give two anecdotes that happened this year, which kind of they catch you off guard every time. Um, one, it was a client that I had that was not from, he's, uh, he's foreign, he's not from the United States, he's from a culture that is, uh, has a history of not being the most inclusive, discriminating against women. Um, and I had a feeling, you know, I would give recommendations and we didn't want to take them, but if my boss gave the same recommendations, I'd be taken. It. It's like I said that two weeks ago, but here we are. Um, so, uh, we're kind of like, I think there's an issue here with culture, and we weren't really sure, and then we had a meeting, and I um, gave a suggestion, and the client said, you'd make a great wife. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, I knew it. <laughs> and I would make a great wife, dang it. <laughs> but that's not the point here. Um, I'm also a great attorney. And so we kind of figured that out, and uh, that's just one of those things where he's from a different culture, so I'm just kind of, I'm going to back out on that one. I don't think I'm going to do that. So, you know, have my boss take that on. Um, and then the other one was um, I had a client who was trying to get his uh, exemption for carrying household goods so he can be a mover. And he has a very extensive criminal record. And, Typically, they won't let you do that. They won't let you carry the household goods. Um, and he was very upset with me. And he asked me if the man who worked at the industrial commission was my boyfriend. He's like, I don't know that person. <laughs> like, that's a stranger. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, that is extremely inappropriate. And just hung up. And that was the end of that. But it does happen. It kind of catches you off guard. It's very strange. I've, like, 
I kind of operate under this veil of ignorance where I never assume anything like that's going to happen to me. I'm just like, things are good. You know, I don't see this major issue happening and it happens. You're like, this is so great. And it's pervasive and it keeps happening. You just kind of, we keep progressing. That's the good part. We're making progress, but these issues are very real and they sneak up on you, you know, at least to expect it. So, <laughs> share it now. Yeah. Um, all right, so again, my um, food and beer pairing preference is um, not as sophisticated, but uh, one of my favorites that I've actually done multiple times um, is a pie and beer pairing. Um, there's a local uh, woman-owned company called Slice Pie Company, and we've done several events with her, so we pair pie and beer. Um, again, also, I enjoy a good stout too, Jamie, and my favorite is this chocolate chest pie with a stout or a brown ale, and it's like, just heavenly. Um, so I will say that um, be more in front of house than back of house. I've had less um, negative experiences or stereotypes than I think other people, other women in the industry have had. Uh, but I have, like I said, mentioned earlier, um, when people go, oh, you work for a brewery. Oh, do you brew beer? And it's like, no, there's so many other things in the industry you can do other than brew beer. And it is a very physically demanding job and I respect and admire all the women in here that brew beer and have brew beer. Um, I've, I've done it on occasion and it's, it's a lot. I don't think I could do it every day. Um, I deal with all the people and that's almost enough in itself anyway. Um, but I do think that uh, just having all the other women here that just show you that there's more to the industry than just drinking beer um, and and knowing beer. I mean, other people have said like, beer is not my choice or beer's not my favorite or this is what I prefer. Um, I enjoy it and I respect it, uh, but I understand also that everybody in the industry isn't a beer person. Um, you don't have to entirely immerse yourself into the field that you're in um, to not only do it well, but respect it. Um, so I, I think that's kind of my discussion. Um, so I have loved beer, beer food as well. I've hosted countless beer dinners over the years and love to geek out over the beer and flavors. Um, this was tough for me, but I think of uh, two things I love, which is cheese and beer, of course. And I'm a big fan of Belgian, so I already got that for my neighbor here. Um, so I'm a huge fan of a Belgian triple paired with the delicious bourgogne, which is a triple cream cheese. Yeah. It's my answer. <laughs> it is this amazing, fatty, salty, creamy, delicious cheese paired with a Belgian triple that's, you know, slightly sweet, nice, spicy, close finish, awesome carbonation, and a pleasant palate. My idea is
I'm incredibly grateful that while I am the only female employee of the actual group within the tap room, um, I am absolutely respected by all of my coworkers. Um, there's never a question of if we're sampling a beer, we're going to start to What do you think? And just you know, being looked at as a resource and as you know, a base of knowledge is, is really incredible. And I, I'm grateful for that. Thank you so much. So we've come leaps and bounds from where we once were. Um, my favorite food and beer pairing, I do love a stout with chocolate. Like, I don't know if you can really beat that, but to be different, <laughs> I'm going to say a Flanders red with a dark chocolate is just so good. Uh, the cherry flavor with dark chocolate is just great. Um, so a story of a struggle that I had as a woman in the industry, the best one that I, example that I have um, of gender stereotyping comes from my first production job at the distillery. And I was, like I said earlier, I pushed really hard to be tall production and I was constantly bugging them about it. When they came in need of an assistant distiller, I said, I really would like to be considered for this role. So my boss at the time was training me and he had me lifting a lot of things by myself that really I'd never seen anybody lifting by themselves. And he said to me, you know why I'm having you lift all these things, right? And I flat out looked at him and said, no, I don't, I don't understand. And he said, well, I have to make sure that you're capable of doing this. We're going to have to change our production schedule. At the time, I was uh, weightlifting pretty frequently, and I could squat close to 400 pounds. Our master distiller at the time weighed 125. <laughs> so I looked at my boss, and I've never been one to fight my tongue. I looked at my boss, and I said, sir. I could squat your head distiller. Um, I don't think the issue is me lifting this by myself. The issue is you don't think I can because I'm a woman. And he kind of stuttered about and disagreed with me. But after that day, he never tried to have me do things out of the ordinary. He trained me like he had before. And so I was proud of that. Not to say that man is better honestly, because he's a pretty terrible human being. <laughs> uh, but he didn't treat me that way anymore, and I was grateful for that. Um, I have to say that in the last two breweries I've worked at, I have never been treated like that. I've never been talked to differently for being a woman, and I think it's fantastic. Uh, I've been well-respected by the men that I've worked with at Mason Jar and Full Steam, and I... I'm grateful for that, to not be treated any differently. Um, we have a line comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, food and beer pairings. Um, my favorite food, beer. And I think, if I, I've, I've been soul searching about this. I think I'm right. It goes with everything. I don't care what you're having. Brown ale is going to be good. Mm -hmm. um, if you're having a burger, it's perfect though. If you're having dessert, it works. If you're having fruit, it's good. If it's hot outside, it's great. If it's cold outside, it's even better. Um, so brown ale with anything is, is great. Um, but the best food and beer pairing I've ever done is if you get out the amazing woman Julia Hurt's book on food and beer pairings and go through her wheels. Um, I didn't, I was 100% sure that I hated IPAs until I had it with dried apricot. And now I know that I don't hate it all the time. I just hate it when I don't have dried apricot. <laughs> 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 um, but I, I highly recommend that book to anybody who is uh, wanting to explore and taste some different things together. Um, so the first brewery that I ever worked at, with, and I say that because it was um, an internship, I wasn't getting paid to work there. Um, and since I was the intern, even though my name is Anita, they called me Monica. Um, for those in the room that are too young, <laughs> just Google intern Monica. 
Um, <clears throat> the second brewery that I worked at had some issues and I brought data and said, we have some issues. And even though there was data, um, I was told that I was crazy. I was told that I didn't know what I was talking about in, a, in front of all of my coworkers. Um, the next brewery that I was at, I got a lot of respect from the gentleman that I worked with. Um, I have a, a really good team. Um, but then other people would come into the brewery. They were delivering supplies. Um, there was one gentleman that was delivering chemicals and servicing like a chemical dispensing station and he needed a tool. And I was waiting for my brewer to finish filling a barrel out of a tank so that I could then go and clean that tank. He was, so you guys have seen those conical vessels. He was like in between the cone in the barrel and could hardly move um and i was standing out in the walkway with my hands on my hips just like waiting because it was going to happen any minute um and the supplier came in and he pointed at the other brewer and he was like hey buddy i got a question for you it's like where do you keep your wrenches or whatever and he had to put everything that he was working with down, wedge himself out of this situation and go get it. Meanwhile, I've got my name on my shirt and it's got a brewery logo on it. And I was like, okay. And so I looked at the guy and I was like, I'll bite. Which one of these guys do you think I'm in a relationship with? <laughs> because that is the only reason that I would be standing here with my name on my shirt representing this company in a production space and not know where we keep the tools. Um, and yeah, um, once I was at Terrapin, it was a very different story. I was one of six women on that routine. Um, it was an entirely different environment. Um, and I can say that coming here is a very different experience. Um, having a beer that's called Hell Yes Ma'am and having a culture that has been established from the beginning in this industry, in this company. Um, I get a lot of respect on the floor. Um, I think that, um, you know, when I say I think we should do things this way, and I'm still the only woman on the floor, they're like, you're right. And they, they do it. My way. <laughs> um, not always, but a lot of times. And it's, it's, it's very refreshing just to be respected and to have my skills and my expertise honored. Um, well, I appreciate everybody's comments. Um, and I know we have come a very long way. Um, and I still think we have a very long way to go. But um, a lot of stories in this room, um, a lot of comments. I wish we could go on for another hour. Um, I wanted to leave the last um, five minutes to um, any questions or comments Okay, um, from the audience or from online. Okay. One of our online questions that we'll go to the pro okay. uh, was, do you have any um, sort of information on pay equity in the industry? How, how women no. care? <laughs> 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 uh, who wants to take that <laughs> I don't have any um, empirical data, so if anybody has... Um, I don't. Yeah. I think that... The Brewers Association has some resources online. I don't know how new or current that information would be. And are they gender specific? Or that's also I, my question. I, yeah. I, I also have that question, but I think if anybody has that information available for the Brewers Association. Association. I'll say that I don't, I don't ever feel like with my salary, it's been different from males. Because I feel like with what I've done in years past, it's been pretty even, but that's, that's just me. I can say the same thing about my job, but I'm not in the brewing industry. So. <laughs> you still have it. Yeah. <laughs> I think, can I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm going to pop in. I, I think the thing about it is, is that it's so new 
for women being in this industry that that data has not been collected yet, which is why I laughed the way that I did, because there, you know, from our personal experiences within the local industry, that may not be the case where any of us know of anything different, but, you know, in regards to being somebody that is at least pretty young in the industry, you know, I, I do, I'm completely comfortable with talking about my salary and things like that to other people. And I think that is something that should be made more common. However, you know, like I said before, you know, as, as all of you guys said, you know, women being a bigger part in this industry is still relatively new and so i don't think that that data has actually yeah. been put out there and and it'd be interesting to see like her her role too because i'm sure mary yeah. versus sales yeah. versus front of house managing mm -hmm. um maybe maybe different there more be maybe more um uh differences depending on the, the I have heard horror stories from other women but that they stood up for themselves and they said hey I'm on production, you're paying me the same much as the delivery driver. And they said, you know, fix it. And they were told, oh, well, you know, your fiance is going to be a doctor. So you got it covered. And they're like, no. And then they left. And I have tremendous respect for those women that stood up for themselves. Yeah. Um, we have a question about uh, entering the profession or entering the field for women later in life. Uh, so sort of age opportunities as well. Or if you're approaching your retirement, wanting the second career. <laughs> so I extremely encourage this. I have in the last year hired um, two guys that were uh, coming into their 50s who decided for a career change. And I would gladly hire a female who wanted to have a career change if she wanted to come into production. Um, it's about a willingness to learn and a passion, and you don't have to necessarily know exactly everything coming into it. I, I was a stay-at-home mom. I had twins, so I took five years off to raise the kids. And I, I started back with All About Beer magazine part-time on the weekends. And then I took another part-time job. And then that led to a full-time job. But just getting your foot in the door part-time is great, too. Last online question we have is for... Changes in the industry driven by COVID. Anything that's uh, <laughs> yeah. positive, yeah. negative, everything. Everything. I think there's so much that's had to change as far as um, you know sales, production, um, just volume, um, the way how we do things. I think with every industry, um, you've had things you've had to look at differently. Um, and, you know, one of the questions that we didn't get to is, you know, what, what do women bring to the industry? And I think that, um, you know, it's been such a male dominant, male driven industry for so long that women just in general have another fresh perspective. Um, it's with any other sort of um, minority group you bring into a different industry, um, just a different perspective. And um, I think everybody um, is really grateful for the changes that, or the support that the workers guild and the, uh, the government has given the brewing industry um, to understand how important this is, especially to North Carolina, um, and the support that they've done to make sure that every state would win, that stay in business and continue to brew and so, um, so um, I think from the experience that I had in a brewery during COVID um, is just um, problem solving, looking at what you need to do to keep that production, to keep the sales. Um, and people, especially I think in the triangle area, are very supportive of, of local businesses and local industries. And so I think that has been a big component of um, the brewery staying afloat. Um, but I don't know if you guys want to comment as well as how COVID you guys have done here. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I would second the ability to pivot, uh, to be nimble, to be able to think on your feet, so to speak, and problem solve has been critical through all of the things. You know, none of us ever expected to be here, especially two years in. Uh, but uh, just really being able to evaluate what you're doing. I would say really flexible teams. What I saw happen working in a space where we had an 
heard this echoed by a lot of breweries. You have 80% of your beer going out in kegs and 20% going out in cans and suddenly COVID happens and it literally flops. And so your production team has to swap. And some people were only doing packaging before, but then you suddenly had brewers who, okay, we don't need to produce any wort right now. We don't need to ferment more tanks. We've got a lot in the tank right now. These brewers still need a job. We need a lot more package going out. All right, guys, you get to be on the packaging line. Come on. You get to learn a new skill. Like, those people being flexible and willing to learn was hugely helpful when COVID happened. That one one comment more than anything else, and then just wanted to point out, uh, I think Anita mentioned uh, Julia Hertz earlier. Everybody hasn't heard within the last 48 hours. She has rejoined the Brewers Association as the first female executive director of the American Homebrewers Association. So a 250,000 member American Homebrewers Association is now headed by Julia Hertz. So that's pretty cool. And North Carolina Craft Brewers Guild now has a, a female director as well. Lisa Parker is now uh, the head of the Brewers Guild now that Bridge Green is stepping down. We are taking over. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No surprise on that. She'll close us out. Thank you all. All right, guys. Oh my gosh, this has been so wonderful. Thank you to all of our panelists. Thank you to all of our guests. We will go ahead and wrap up and say happy holidays, everybody. But if you want to hang around for a little while, if you had a question you wanted to ask our panelists, I'm sure they'd be happy to hang around for a minute or two. We'll go ahead and sign off. We look forward to seeing you in 2022. It sounds weird to even say it, <laughs> but we look forward to seeing you all then and happy, happy holidays to you all. Thank you so much to all of our panelists. This has just been awesome. Thank you. <laughs>